So in Cybernetic Horizon, we got the new TCG archetype known as Danger. It's basically a discard-esque archetype revolves around the fact that you can special summon dangers from your hand by randomly having your opponent select one card in your hand to discard, discard a card, special danger from hand, and then draw another card, or essentially looting, but you also put a free body on field. The Danger archetype is very degenerate in the sense that they're basically all upstart goblins. And and in today's video, I'll be explaining why that actually is more crazy than you think, and why honestly, in my opinion, Danger was a mistake. By the way, if you guys haven't already, go check out Sam's new playmat, the good old 5Ds playmat. You got Stardust on there, you got Red Dragon Archfiend, it is pretty crisp. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Sam, and if you haven't already seen my channel, my name is BladeYGO, I make videos on my YouTube channel, BladeYGO, and those videos are revolved around car discussions, discussions in general about the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game. I get very analytical and you'll see in this video what I'm referring to by that. So hopefully with that you guys go do all of that, hopefully, or if not, enjoy the rest of this video. So why is danger a mistake? Well I think at first we need to analyze why danger monsters are so good. I'm going to make an assumption that you already know the standard danger stuff. If like for example you use its effect in hand, your opponent randomly picks a card in your hand and then your opponent randomly chooses one you discard it and if well it's not the danger you revealed you can special summon the danger from your hand and from there you draw a card and that's its effect but then as well it also has an effect when it's discarded so if your opponent hits the danger you can either destroy one face-up card on the field destroy one set card on the field send one danger from your deck to grave add one danger monster from your deck to your hand you can reduce the attack and defense of your opponent's monsters by a thousand. You can make both players draw one and discard one. You can special summon a danger from your grave. You can special summon a danger from your deck. Or with Tsukinoko, you can special summon itself when it's discarded. So there is a lot of versatility, but why is danger just so good? Obviously, the discard effects are relevant, which I'll get to in a second, but really what's so crazy about the danger monsters is just the idea that they're all upstart goblins, they're all free bodies, and well, that's kind of crazy. First, let's talk about the fact that they're all upstart goblins. And also you can relate this to chicken game. So chicken game is banned and upstart goblin is at one. At first, upstart goblin wasn't really being played, but then Patrick Hoban revolutionized the idea of playing three upstart goblin in your deck because of the fact that in a 40 card deck, you have a set percentage of seeing a specific card, which in this case, if you're playing a 40 card deck and you have three copies of a card in your deck, it's around a 33% chance to see in your opening five. But then when we add Upstart Goblin, the deck becomes a 37 card deck. So the ideal with Upstart Goblin is because you draw a card, regardless of the fact your opponent gains a thousand life points, you are drawing another card into your deck, meaning you are essentially playing 37 cards in your deck instead of the traditional 40, which means Upstart Goblin gets around this idea that you have to play 40 cards in your deck and instead you can minimize that count. Well, with that in mind, Mind, we also have chicken game which is another card where you can pay a thousand life points to have one of a few options but the main option in mind is to draw one card does this sound familiar well with upstart goblin at three at a time we add three chicken game three upstart and because chicken game is a field spell we add three terraforming so that means you can add a chicken game from your deck to your hand meaning you're essentially playing a 31 card deck making your deck even more consistent and being able to see your power cards. Well, with that in mind, dangers are the exact same thing. If you're going to go ahead and use a danger effect and they do not choose the danger in your hand, you're not only getting a free body, but you're also drawing a card, meaning every danger monster gets you another card further into your deck. And well, that's the exact same thing as Upstart Goblin. However, you can even argue it's better just because of the fact you're gaining more advantage through that by putting an additional special summon on the field. Before I delve even further into dangers, let me talk about the free body aspect of dangers. Not only are the danger monsters upstart goblins, which already is really crazy, but they're a free body. So the reason why it's so crazy that you just get a free body on field, I mean, it's a free body. It's a free special summon. And while in control decks, this is 
isn't as advantageous because you're not really going to want to put free bodies on the field, but rather just control the game state because those free bodies don't do anything without other cards. But in combo decks, that's the main focus with this engine and this idea that you can play dangers as free bodies. The entire purpose of playing the danger engine is obviously to dig further in your deck through the idea of it being an upstart goblin, but the fact that it puts free bodies means it makes link summoning that much easier and this is the perfect companion to link summoning now as an engine it's actually really bonkers basically the idea is you can play three nessie three jackalope and three sukinoko and maybe some mothman chupacabra etc just any danger monster is so good because it's just so powerful to resolve its effect in hand what's so good about nessie jackalope and sukinoko however is no matter what if your opponent even discards a jackalope or chooses jackalope nessie or sukinoko you are guaranteed to have a free body on field that's why this engine has become so much better and that's why people play those nine in so many combo decks because they're just that good if you're playing a combo deck this format you're probably going to be playing a danger variant of the combo deck i mean if you look at our meta game right now for example we have so much danger in the meta not necessarily pure but if you're playing a combo deck you're probably playing danger i mean we have spiral danger we have thunder dragon danger we have burning abyss danger there are so many good danger variants and as well along with that even if you're discarding a card sometimes it's not always the greatest but if you're playing a spell and trap you want to keep in hand you can set it and otherwise you can use a danger in hand and if it hits another card that card could potentially be good in the graveyard so for example in burning abyss you can hit a distrudo you can hit any ba monster in your hand and then it, you get value off of that because then they'll trigger their graveyard effect if you're playing a deck like warriors or if you're playing a thunder dragon deck using the og thunder dragon in hand to add two more means you have two cards that if you hit with the danger become just a free card and that's actually really good because i mean thunder dragon doesn't really do much after you use its effect in hand then we have phoenix blade which if you're going to hit a phoenix blade phoenix blade is only meant as discard farter regardless so that just means hitting phoenix blade is another free card that is so good the last big part about why this is such a good engine is because of the fact that they're all not hard ones per turns and this also ties into the idea of it being a pure deck so just because they're not a hard ones per turn or a once per turn at all means that you can just keep using their effects and that's just the main appeal that's why you can play so many copies of danger monsters and i think if it was a once per turn it would still be played but it wouldn't be nearly as good and you'd probably be seeing two copies of each danger instead of three as of right now now real quick i do want to talk about the pure deck because i think the pure deck is kind of crazy and the reason why i say that is because you're playing so many upstart goblins in your deck that means that you can just keep digging for power cards like even like if grinder golem was at one you could play that but now it's banned you can dig for eradicator epidemic virus there are a lot of cards you can dig for and it's e even easier to dig because of some of the cards you have access to playing for example you have access to play saryuja you have access to play beginning of the end saryuja just draws four puts three back that's even more digging power for you and then beginning of the end just gives you three draws and the reason why beginning of the end is so good in this deck is because you can just flood your grave with dark so easily i mean think about it if your dangers keep discarding other dangers and then you keep link summoning with them eventually you're going to have seven darks in your grave to resolve beginning of the end so beginning of the end is quite crazy in danger we also have a card like curious because all of your dangers are different types that just means that you can make curious very easily and curious is a very powerful card don't get me wrong it can send literally any card in the game to the graveyard and then if you're sending something like imperial order for example you can easily make griffin afterwards and then set it which just makes it even better we also have many different pure danger decks in the past for example we've had multiple 
multiple danger FTKs. We have one with Cyber Sign right now. In the past, we've had the Firewall Loop, where you just keep looping Grappa. You have other variants, like the Slash Draw FTK variant, which is you stack Slash Draw on the bottom of your deck with Saryuja, and because you're playing so many draw cards and just so many upstart goblins in the form of dangers, that just means that you can easily, easily put Slash Draw on the bottom of your deck or one of the three slots, and then you keep drawing, and then you keep track of where the Slash Draw is, and then eventually you just go ahead and resolve Slash Draw because you know where it is, and you've digged for so many cards in your deck. So there are a lot of ways to play it. We also have the Extra Link variant, and there are other ways as well. And so I think Danger is honestly just such a crazy deck. Their level versatility is very good. I mean, for example, with a card like Tomahawk, which is now banned most likely because of Danger and otherwise just a great token generator. Danger, for the reasons I've already mentioned, is a very powerful engine in deck because of how much digging you can do in this type of deck. Even though there's a card like Drone Lockbird, which is a great counter against Danger, but it's not reliable to be relying on Drone Lockbird all the time against Danger. Danger, regardless of Drone Lockbird, is just so powerful, and I 100% think it was a mistake to be made into the game, considering how much power it brings to the table with what it does. Thank you so much to Sam again for letting me guest upload on his channel. I greatly appreciate it. Go check out my channel if you want more Yu-Gi-Oh! content and discussions like this one. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And with that, I hope to see you soon. I feel like Usain in the cheetah print. Talk fresh game, I don't need a mint. R.I.P. the game, shh, I need a minute. Okay, let's proceed with it. I'm in the house, got to deal with it. These bozos always sneak this and they take a shots. I'm a keen with it. Like, no, no, this league business. Ooh, you